Good noontide to you all, and thanks for attending Code Green. From the Hawaii State Energy Office, where our goal is 100% clean energy by the year 2045, which is not that far away. One way we're approaching getting that to that goal is by having new energy codes, but that doesn't cover any everybody by any means because it's only about 1% of the total po building population. What's a bigger population is sold homes, sold by real estate agents. Could they be a fertile ground for helping Hawaii reach 100% clean energy by 2045? Absolutely, positively, if every real estate broker and agent were like the Honorable Judy Sobin, who is our guest today. Welcome to the show, Judy. Thank you so much for joining us. And you are a certified green real estate agent. You've gone through training. And I happen to know that you're as green as a four-leaf clover because we first met Longer than we would care to admit. Yes. <laughs> Many years ago when you were running for office, I think it was State House, and you almost won. You had a really good campaign, didn't quite make it, but I got to know you as a very, very green person and was delighted when you went into the real estate agents seat. So welcome, Judy. And thank you, Owen. <laughs> And begin by telling us why you're so gosh darn green. Again, you were running for <laughs> office as a greenie, and now you're a greenie real estate broker. So well, give us a little background, Judy. I am learning every day. And it's, so it's not that I know everything about being green or making, making our homes greener. But um, I did take a wonderful two-day course that was that the National Association of Realtors offered. It was wonderful. I learned a lot. Um, and it, but it's mostly life experience and working in the community um, that has really, I think, helped me to help others uh, when I can. And Howard, you were one of the first people <laughs> that I knew who, who helped, you know, when we first talked about LED lights and and uh, and now that's you know many of our homes, including my own, are are filled with them, mm -hmm. and um, so simple things like that have helped to make me realize that we can do things pretty easily if we want to. So um, so that's what happened. So now I am I am certified be because I took this class because I passed it. Um, and learning more every day. Well, you know, that was, uh, let, let's not admit to any more than 20 years ago when you <laughs> ran for office and we were talking about LEDs way back then. That's right. That's right. Yes, what has happened to the yes. LED industry since then? It was just kind of a pioneering, very efficient industry back then. Today, it is the giant among the lighting industries. And it's overtaking us like a wonderful green tsunami. Yes. LEDs yes. are way, way, yes. way above Actually, yes. of any and other the, lighting source. Reason why I, one of the reasons why I ran for office, it was for city council mm -hmm. at that time, was be, be, and, I, and, I, and I still believe it, that the city uh, has so much control over so much of what we do and how we do it, because it's the infrastructure that the city has the sewers the water um that that you know make us who we are and hopefully um we work together to preserve the the elements that 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 make our community green including our parks and our our recreational activities et cetera et cetera because when i when i think of um the the whole concept of of keeping our community strong, green, I think three things. One is that we want to save operational costs because that helps everybody 
everywhere. We want to provide a comfortable environment in the home and a healthy environment in the home. And, and all of that, I believe, has to do with the energy savings and, and the outdoors. And it's not all or nothing to me. We, some, you can't do everything every day, but we can do a little something each day. And that's, that's kind of, that's my theory on this whole thing. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. And you'll be delighted to know that since, maybe it was your influence, but since you ran for office, all these successive mayors have been green to one extent or another. Maybe the major example is converting all of our streetlights to uh, LEDs. And some of us lobbied hard to get the lighting color down from, I think it was 4,000 degrees Kelvin to 3,000 degrees Kelvin, because there was a lot of complaints. The higher the degrees Kelvin, the more blue there is in lights and the harsher the lighting environment is. And you want that for certain environments, but not for your residential street. So we got right. very efficient lights down, but at a much more more comfortable uh, uh, degrees Kelvin, which makes it a much gentler uh, type type of light with beautiful uh, visibility. Now you mentioned uh, comfort in yes. homes. Does energy efficiency and comfort in homes have any uh, co correlation between one one and another? Absolutely. You know, one one of the things, um, and this is perhaps not the easiest thing to do uh, for our homes, but one of the things that we can do while we're remodeling or building a home mm -hmm. is to put more efficient insulation in. And, and in Hawaii, we don't even, we often don't think of insulation. I know my own home, which was built in 1970, does not have any insulation um, because we thought, well, it's, you know, it's, we don't need it, it's warm here. But mm -hmm. insulation is, is also for the, uh, to keep the warmth out and to keep the home cool. And um, so we don't need as much uh, artificial air or air conditioning. <laughs> and that's, I think that's really um, something that I, it took a while to learn. And when we were remodeling a bit, we asked our contractor to, you know, please put insulation in. Um, whatever was the most uh, the, the greenest insulation <laughs> we could find, and he he would looked at us askance and he said, well, "You don't need insulation." <laughs> so we we insisted on it. Luckily, he's a friend and he took it well, and um, it, it made a degree at least a five degree difference in the rooms, the ceiling areas where we put it. Mm -hmm. It isn't in the side of the house because we didn't remove a wall on the side and um anyway i it's something that that we don't talk about much but it it keeps the place comfortable it keeps our our energy bills more uh, at a lower price because we don't have to use our air conditioning as much as global warming takes over <laughs> and um and that's it so i it's something it's it's something that can be done in new homes and in remodeling. Well, we, and we first wrote the residential energy code back in 1997, when you were probably still in uh, grade school. And <laughs> we did that because the 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 building boom in the Everplains was just beginning and there was yes. no insulation. And right. the homes were so hot that when people came home at the end of the day, they had to open up all the doors and windows and just let the trade winds through, blowing the hot air out. And some of them took their dinners outside and with a TV set and sat outside for a while to let the home cool down. So that's when we got insulation as a mandatory building measure into our residences way, way back then. Mm -hmm. But of course, a lot of homes were built without insulation, yours being a prime example. Now, let me point out another way to keep the home exterior cool. Number one, with cool roofs. And that just involves having a lighter color on the roof exterior 
so that when the sun's heat hits it, instead of being absorbed and going in, it reflects back. And very recently, we helped establish the Cool Wall Rating Council, which is now built, getting to be built into building codes. The more reflective your wall exterior, the more heat that you get mirrored back rather than absorbed into wow. the, uh, the home. And that's a very low cost, easy way of uh, keeping your home that naturally cool. Yes. You're, if you are a good painter, <laughs> you can mm. you can get the material. It's it's not the least expensive kind of paint to put on, but um, I have several wonderful clients who have done it. It makes a huge difference on the roof, mm -hmm. even with an old even with an old house. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially with an old house, because those may yes. be the most, uh, we, we talk about absorptive surfaces, meaning the sun's heat hits and boom, it gets absorbed right through there and it goes into the building interior where we don't uh, want it. So I'm very, uh, you're, you're a great I, sales lady if you persuade it to your clients. To, uh, statue, yeah. that's good. Um, I guess one of the other, um, Kind of least expensive and really efficient things to do is is solar water um mm -hmm. because it's uh it's it you know it's 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 one of the it, our water the cost of heating water at least in in our home and i think in most homes is about 30 to 40 percent mm -hmm. of our our bill and um oftentimes when people think of solar they don't think of water they think of you know their other other things in the home and i and i really think that's something that you know it's it's one of the oldest things that can be done like on our i think yep. it was the late 70s when <laughs> mm -hmm. we got our first one wasn't yep. the most efficient one but it worked and now we've updated on the home we live in and um and and actually Ours, I believe, were installed actually before we bought the house in the 80s. And when we bought the house, which was only about 10 years ago, um, the owner said, oh, the, you have solar, but it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That was kind of odd. Yeah. So we, we called a solar water company, a uh, solar uh, company, and uh, they came in. They flushed out the system. They cleaned it. And for I, I don't think it was more than a couple hundred dollars. We had solar water again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I I think that to me that's one of the areas that um, is is very valuable to the homeowner, and it's valuable when selling a home too, because it's Absolutely. it's a teachable moment. <laughs> well, so let let you... me give you a very happy statistic. Way back when, when you were first thinking about buying your home and so forth, the average consumption for a typical Hawaii home was about 1,000 kilowatt hours a month. And now, with all the bells and whistles that we have, including air conditioning, if you have kids, they've got every electronic gadget known to man. And Lord knows what other things you have electrically consuming in the home. Our typical bill is now 600 kilowatt hours a month down from 1,000. The prime reason being that there are over 100,000 solar water heaters in our, on our roofs. Wow. And this is a teeny little state. 100,000 is a very significant number. So from 1,000 to 600 because of solar water heating. And let's put you to the test, Judy. Are there any tax credits? Or solar water heating. Yes. Yes. But I'm not sure what they are now. <laughs> You're going to have to give me that. There, that. there are both federal tax credits, state tax credits, and Hawaii Energy will yeah. give you a rebate such that your the initial cost is now around seven thousand dollars to install a new solar water heating system, and with after all the tax credits rebates, it comes down to more like three thousand. Right. 
And if as a result, you're saving, say just as little as $100 a month, 3,000, that's 30 month payback. It's right. a half no, year payback and you'll be saving a lot more. Best, exactly, it is the best payback of, mm -hmm. of anything. In fact, I'm thinking back, I think it was about that amount when we, maybe could probably wasn't that much, but when we initially installed it, um, Mm -hmm. years ago so that's great that's that's good to know yep and yeah. while we're on the subject solar water heaters last forever but like us they do show the signs of age sometimes and there is such a thing as a solar tuna yes a yes certified solar dealer gets up on the roof and says oh this needs repairing this needs repairing this needs repairing the panels need to be all nice and clean again and it costs a few hundred dollars, but Hawaii Energy, boom, instantly rebates you $200. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You're probably due for one now, so that's a good, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it does, there are some uh, solar water heater does need to be replaced just like a regular water heater at some point in time. So, so there are additional things that go in, but it's, it's not a you know not a big difference in mm -hmm. terms of the infrastructure. That's great to know. Very good. And when you're advising your clients on you know making the home more efficient before selling, do you uh, invoke the name Hawaii Energy much? Um, you know, not until recently. And I'll <clears throat> I'll tell you why. Uh, what when people after people purchase a home is when I've had been able to assist more in terms of what they can do for the future. Right before selling a home, it, it, putting in um, a, a solar water heater or a photovoltaic panels doesn't really change the sale of the home that much. It's, really? it's the use of it as you go. In. Now, now what I do have to say that uh, three years ago, appraisers did not even give credit for having photovoltaic. And that has changed. Oh, maybe it was four years ago. And you know, it was a kind of a very upsetting thing. But now they are. Now when they do an appraisal, they will they will give um, credit for the for the uh, photovoltaic or solar water. Um, but not to the extent that um, they would for, say, a remodeled kitchen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting thing. So it's a learning process all around. And, um, you know, I think it's getting better and better as far as placing a value on that, mm -hmm. on the uh, energy efficiency. Very item. good. So you're, you're, are you kind of bugging the uh, appraisal yes, I, institute? I'm one of the people that bugs them on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. there are many agents that do. It's not just me. But it's, it's one of those things. That, because almost everybody asks now when they purchase home, oh, does it, is it photovoltaic and are they owned or are they leased? That's sort of the, the, the question that comes up almost every time. And um, so, but not the appraisers will, you have to let them know, by the way, it does have photovoltaic and it is valuable to these, to these buyers. So it's, it's, it's a learning process and it's getting better and better. Very good. And I'm sure that you are a spark plug, a catalyst for the or, appraisal. Or, or, pain, or a pain somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> because there, there is a checklist that appraisers yes. go through yes. as, as they're appraising yes. a home. And I believe that there are several energy efficiency rated or related items that are on that checklist. Well, like, that's... for instance, uh, oh, well, j just an anecdote. I had my home appraised maybe six years ago, and I was sitting down with the appraiser, and I said, uh, by the way, I've, I've got a solar water heater on my roof. Oh, you do? I said, yeah, you want to get up on the letter and see it? Oh, no, 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 no. But it was a total, total, total uh, afterthought. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now it's gotten better. Now they yeah. do. Yeah. They do ask and and they they want to know. Yeah, that that's thanks to to people like you who keep on uh, be, being <laughs> a, a, a pain. Like I said, many of us who have been uh, bugging about that, and um, you know one one of the um, 
areas. And I don't know that I've seen any real statistics, and I'm sure you have on this, are the Energy Star appliances. I was hoping you to say Which that. I yes. always encourage, and I always look for for myself, et cetera. But I don't really know, you know, what, you know, how much I'm saving with them or if I'm doing anything very positive. I know it always has a, it always has a kilowatt hour on that. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's real or, or not. Oh, it, it, it's real because these okay. are um, required by NEMA, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. And they, they have very strict uh, testing procedures for every manufacturer. So it's kind of baked in before the these items reach the retail floor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll just give a, the statistic I most like is regarding refrigerators. If you have an old 20, 25 year old refrigerator, it's going to consume about 1,400 kilowatt hours a year you replace it with the same size new refrigerator, Energy Star, with all the bells and whistles in it, starting with the ice maker and Lord knows what other features, 450 kilowatt hours a year. You're reducing, you're improving all of these features yeah. in the machine and saving 1,000 kilowatt hours a year. That That's just a prime example of the, the magic of energy efficiency. Oh, that's exactly it. Well, good. And then um, I think the other, uh, one of the other things that I'm often asked about, and I, and I have some knowledge, but I'm sure you have more, is as, as things warm up around us more, more people are looking at um, air conditioning in their homes. Even though we have our trade winds, they're not always there <laughs> when we want them. And um, so I know there's, the. it seems to me, and what we've done is these, the ductless mini split air seem to be <laughs> the most efficient, uh, but maybe not the most attractive <laughs> yeah. all the time. But uh, perhaps you could, you know, give us a little bit more background. Yeah, the, the ductless were, were when, you know, some years ago, when you wanted a small air conditioner, you put in what was called a window unit, yes. which yes. was this clunky thing in the wall and then it stuck out to the outdoors. Those were not very efficient at all. They did not have long lives and they were noisy. Yes. And this is one of these deals where it, efficiency technology efficiency just improves 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 and makes life better for us the split systems are much smaller totally quiet and they are outrageously efficient yes and the advantage of split systems these are just little units that you put in the wall not you you better get a professional to do it yes. <laughs> and there's generally one unit for each room for the kitchen living room, TV room, and then for the bedrooms. And the advantage here is that, say, the whole family is, let's say it's a two-story home, the whole family is downstairs for the early evening. And then as people begin to tootle up to their bedrooms, then they turn on their split systems. It has been off this whole time. And then gradually everybody leaves the first floor, yes. all those systems there are off so that you're using these units only when you need them great uh, beauty in that and of course everything can be remotely controlled now so yes. if you know you're going to get home at say five in the afternoon you can remotely turn on the split systems on the ground floor a half hour in advance so you walk in <clears throat> to a nice uh, cool room and again they're very efficient but in terms of keeping spaces cool, I would be very remiss, remiss if I did not mention ceiling fans. Ceiling fans consume a teeny, teeny little fraction of what air, even the split systems do. And in our mild climate, they do a beautiful job of keeping us cool. It's true. We have both in our house, and usually we're using the, the ceiling fans for 
ninety percent of the time. Very good. And how, how many? On those common many? things. And <laughs> mm -hmm. you need it. So um, the other thing, you know, I know in today's paper there was a big story, front page story about uh, from Heco or from Hawaiian Electric talking about um, different the different um, time schedules for using electric because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know it um they're talking about less expensive times and you know using doing what you can to use electricity during that mm -hmm. time which which we do in our household because we we can we have flexible schedules so we can use the daytime for for mm -hmm. charging the car the electric car etc Oh, ah, you have an EV yeah. also. Yes. Well, EV. Another, we've got well, about hybrid, one. hybrid EV. <laughs> I'm not quite well, all EV yet. Then you don't have to worry about charging. Exactly. Yeah. Hybrid EV. We're so, uh, so anyway, but I, and, and we do that. And I, I don't know why it was a big story because Hawaiian Electric has done, has that different pricing for mm -hmm. EV. But in any case, maybe it's good because more people know about it. So, we're not actually using less electric, but we are lowering our bill because mm -hmm. we're using it during. Very time. good. Yeah. This is called time of day pricing. Yes. And the deal is that we have so many solar panels on so many roofs that we produce way more electricity than we need in the middle of the day. So we have to have storage batteries to store it up so we can use it in the evening when there's no more sun and when the use goes up. But another thing you can do is put timers now on your washer yes. and your dryer and your dishwasher such that say one goes on at 11 another goes on at 12 another goes on at one so you're using up that cheap electricity right when there's a surplus of it and then you don't have to bother with it when the electricity is more uh, expensive and you're doing all of us a favor uh, by that and speaking of favors, we're about to get the hook, Judy. Oh, so my good. God. That was so much fun <laughs> talking to you, Howard. Oh, do you have any uh, parting words of wisdom? Oh, I get, I, no, I think, we, I think we were able to cover quite a few, and I thank you, and, and I thank Think Tech for doing this uh, for the last 22 years. It was, it's great for the community. Thank you. Okay, well, on that very, very cheery note, thank you, Judy Sobin Green Realtor. This has <laughs> been Code Green. Thank you so much for attending and see Aloha. you next time. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.